Hey there, Possum Rob here. So over the past year, there have been a metric buttload of sci-fi, fantasy, and superhero type shows come out. So many that it's too much to focus on just one for an episode, because if I did that, it would be the springtime before I'd be done with all of them. And I want to do other stuff on the show too. So instead of that, we're going to do one big TV show roundup here and talk about all of them. Well, most of them. There's a lot to get through, so strap in. Not bad for the show's first cold open, huh? May keep that. We'll see. All right, let's get started. Andor. Well, we've already talked a lot about Obi-Wan Kenobi, so I'm going to skip that one. This series has really surprised me. I'm not going to lie. While I liked Rogue One, I wasn't over the moon about it. But this thing is a real departure from everything we've seen before from the Star Wars TV shows. I love The Mandalorian, but even it doesn't seem as serious as this show does. It really leaves the camp and silliness that sometimes punctuates, to a varying degree, any Star Wars story behind and tackles some pretty serious issues, and I dig it. Now, some people, including people whose opinion I really respect, have issues with the pacing, and I get that. It's a bit slow moving, but I'm still loving it. The time we spend with the characters, getting insights on their motivations, and just taking in the horrific environment of the Empire really at its peak, and the subsequent birth and infancy of the Rebellion, is right up my alley. It's still going on, so we'll see where it takes us, but I'm excited for this series to continue. Good stuff there. She-Hulk. Okay, so with this one... While I like a lot of it, kind of like with Ms. Marvel, I don't think I'm in the target demographic. And that's okay. Ain't everything got to be aimed at me. That being said, I think it was a little ambitious to have a series focused around a CGI character. Because I don't think they're doing as good a job on her that they would have been able to do in a movie setting or something like that. I like the idea of a superhero-focused law practice, though. And I hope they really explore that concept more if they get a season two. I liked seeing Abomination again, and I really liked that he seems to be earnest with that whole Zen thing he's doing, finale notwithstanding. And hey, Daredevil, huh? Daredevil. But Tatiana Maslany is doing a great job as Jen, and I need lots more Madison and Wong. That's all I'm saying. Sandman. So I was turned on to this comic book when I was back in Possum College, and I never even considered the possibility they would make a show out of it. But I gotta tell you, I can't imagine them doing a better job with this than they did. It looks great. And the cast, eh, with a couple of exceptions, has been outstanding. I know having Neil Gaiman on the show is a big part of that, too. Now, they've made some changes here and there, and we can debate the success of those changes, I guess. But overall, I couldn't be happier with the result. For those unfamiliar with Sandman, I really recommend you check it out. But keep in mind, it's for that same kind of audience that Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon is for, if you catch my drift. But it's good, imaginative stuff. And of all the shows I'm covering here, I'm the most excited about seeing another season of this one. Okay, so I'm usually the guy covering the sci-fi type stuff, right? And while I love fantasy too, I got a cousin who's a real expert. Now, he's going to tell you he's a wizard, but just between you and me, he's not. He lives in my aunt's basement. He plays a lot of them really confusing board games, the ones where you've played them four times and you still don't know how to play them, you know? And they love him whenever he shows up at Possum Con. So I figured I'd get him on the horn to talk about some of the fantasy-focused shows we've been seeing. So here we go. It's possible I'll need to apologize for something at the end of the show, but we'll deal with that later. Hey there. Okay, folks, this is my cousin, Possum Wizard. How you doing, Wiz? I'm doing well, young Rob. I trust you all the same? Yeah, okay. So, you watch that Rings of Power, right? 
I don't think anyone would be surprised to find out that you have a certain expertise in that particular intellectual property. So I gotta know, what'd you think about it? Well, as you say, I've spent a great deal of time poring over the books and material regarding Middle Earth. The Silmarillion is my favorite of Professor Tolkien's books, possibly my favorite book, period. I know the names of all the Valar, and I have a tattoo of Laurelin and Telperion on my... Ouch. So believe me when I tell you that I should absolutely hate this show. They have changed a great deal of things, introduced brand new characters we've never heard of, ignored tons of lore and changed vital aspects of pivotal characters. I should be outraged by this. I have just as much reason to hate this show as you do to hate that Foundation series you ran so much about. Please do not get me started on that pile of garbage. I swear, folks, I'm going to do a video about that at some point, as soon as I'm sure I can get through it without having to get on blood pressure medicine. Well, quiet. I should be hating this show as much as you hate that one. For the same reasons. But, young Rob, the surprising thing is, I don't. Hmm. I'm genuinely enjoying this series. Somehow, I like that they're telling a different story with this material. But to be sure, there's a lot that has changed from the Silmarillion, which they don't have the rights to, to be fair. But I'm good with it. I think that the character of Galadriel has been a little one-dimensional, but we've been seeing a shift in that toward the Galadriel that we all know and love, and I think that one-dimensional thing is part of the point. Being a walking fury machine has its price, and she's discovering that. Now, yes, there are things that annoy me about this show. One of them, young Rob, will cover at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, so stick around for that. But somehow... I'm able to get past that and enjoy the show anyway. I'm as surprised as you are about this. So, while I still recommend reading The Silmarillion and the other original Tolkien works, I nevertheless recommend this series. House of the Dragon I, and many others like-minded, believe that as soon as Benioff and Weiss ran out of Martin's books, the Game of Thrones show went somewhat downhill. That's being generous. It went to hell so fast you'd think it played for the Mets. Just so. With that in mind, when another Game of Thrones show was announced, I wasn't exactly ecstatic. But this has been rather good. The time jumps make for a little bit of confusion, and I admittedly have not read the book that it's based on, so I don't know how faithful it is. But what I've seen has been entertaining, the characters compelling, and the plot well executed. Now, it's not for everyone. Parental discretion is advised, as they say, strongly. But if you're into, well, Game of Thrones sorts of things, then I believe you will enjoy yourself with this. Wheel of Time I watched this show. Well, I believe that's all I have for you, young Rob. I hope I have given some insight to the mostly wonderful world of television fantasy for your viewers. Yeah, you did real good there, Wiz. We'll have to bring you back when the, that Willow show comes out. Ah, yes. Looking forward to it. Well, until next time, as they say in Elvendom, Nagneen. Yeah, mazel tov, whatever. Later. Murder, sir. All the rest. Now, these aren't just from this year, but I wanted real quick to mention some others that were a little earlier or ones that I came to the party late on. Loved Moon Knight. Oscar Isaac continues to act his brains out, and I'm here for all of it. Severance is a masterpiece. Holy crap. Resident Alien. If you're not watching this show, why the heck not? Alan Tudyk plays a alien. What else do you need to know? Arcane. Now, I've never been much of an anime guy, and I don't know anything about the video game this is based on, but this show has really surprised me. 
Beautifully animated, fantastic world building, great characters. Yeah, give this one a shot. The Old Man. Not really a sci-fi show, more of a spy thriller thing. But boy, is it good. And the main cast has serious sci-fi cred. Jeff Kevin Flynn Bridges and John Lord John Warfin Lithgow doing some serious work here. And the rest of the cast is beautiful too. And this one ain't sci-fi, ain't fantasy, but I'm putting it in here because the original is so near and dear to my heart. They revived the kids in the hall. And it is just as bizarre, irreverent, and hilarious as the original. These guys ain't lost a thing. And yes, okay, Book of Boba Fett. (sighs) Star Wars Underworld and Robert Rodriguez should have been a match made in heaven. But not so much, apparently. I like that Tuscan Raider backstory. So there you have it. A roundup of a lot of the TV shows that have been coming out lately and what I think about everything. Seems like there's new stuff all the time, so I bet we end up having to do another one of these things before too long. If you enjoyed the show, like that thumbs up button down there so as I know you dug it. And while you're down there, Hit that subscribe button and uh, ring-a-ling that bell so as you get a notification when the new show drops. And hey, let me know in the comments if you found a new show lately that you're digging on and I might need to check it out. Always looking for new shows to get into. Now as a bonus for sticking around to the end, we'll close out with that thing Wiz was talking about. An addendum to the first episode of Watching Stuff. If you ain't seen it, there it is up there at the top. Courtesy of Rings of Power. Take it easy, all right? Later. Lord of the Southlands. Lord of the Southlands. No. That is the name of a place that no longer exists. Well, should we call it instead, Lord Father? That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all.